Hey Astro Kids and welcome back. And this is my interpretation of what it looks like to have your natal moon in the Naksatra of Porva Bajrapada. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. So before we get into this, we first have to understand what the moon represents, and then we have to break down this Naksatra of Porva Bajrapada. And just a quick disclaimer that this is not according to Western Tropical Astrology. This will be according to Vedic Astrology, which is using the Sidereal Zodiac. So if you're not familiar with what your Sidereal Moon sign is, there is a link to a calculator down below in the description so that you have the correct information. The moon is one of the most important grahas in Vedic astrology. The moon is representing your mind. Therefore, the moon represents everything that is happening within your life. The moon is a reflector. It is a projector. Everything that is in your mind becomes a manifestation within your physical reality. In the same way, you are perceiving everything that is happening within your reality. So the moon is projecting what is in your mind and is reflecting everything within your reality. The moon represents your body, your health, your vitality, how you are interacting with others. When people are coming across you and you are making connections, this is the personality that is coming forward. The moon represents your social standings, how you fit into society, how you're able to adapt and relate to others. The moon is also popularity and beauty. The moon is representing the mother, your connection to your mother, what kind of nurturing you need emotionally, what is making you feel emotionally satisfied. The moon is also representing all of the fluid in your body. So it is connected to your water intake. It is connected to your nourishment, all of your needs that need to be met. The moon is a very personal planet that has to do with your emotions, how you react, and how you are responding to situations around you. I'm super excited to do this Naksatra because I have major placements in this position as well. Porva Bajrapada means the farmer lucky feet. And so this is a very blessed and fortunate Naksatra. This is also very auspicious. Here, as we are in this Naksatra, this is stemming from 20 degrees Aquarius till 3 degrees 20 minutes of Pisces. And so three quarters of this Naksatra exists within the sign of Aquarius, while one quarter exists within Pisces. And so this is our bridge then towards the end of the Zodiac. We talked about in the past how Aquarius is a sign that is all about serving humanity, that is all about helping, about the improvement, the betterment of society. Well, when we get into the sign of Pisces, it is a sign of liberation, a sign of spiritual enlightenment. And so as we get into Pisces, it is about letting go entirely. And so this Naksatra is the gateway to this liberation, to this spiritual awakening. This is a very prominent Naksatra, and it is often a very difficult Naksatra to understand. It's very mysterious and very complex. Porva Bajrapada is called the burning pear or the scorching pear. And so this reference to a pear is telling us that there is a duality that is occurring within this Naksatra. This is a Naksatra that is represented by a man with two faces, two swords crossing each other, or a skull with two swords. And so this is all about this duality of good and evil. This is the beginning of our spiritual awakening, our ascension that is occurring here within this Naksatra. And so this first chapter of this awakening is about facing your dark side, overcoming your darkness, your challenges, and to rise above it. This is the theme here within this Naksatra. Porva Bajrapada is symbolized also by the front legs of a funeral cot. And we can see that this funeral cot extends into our next Naksatra. And so this is literally the front legs of this constellation that is found in Alpha, Beta, Pegasi. And so these two stars of Alpha, Beta, Pegasi are the front legs of this funeral cot, which are the stars Markab and Sheet. Markab is a star that relates to success, honors, and achievement, but it also relates to deep sorrow. And Sheet is a star that also relates to deep sorrow and misfortune. And so this is a Naksatra that can 
be very lucky, very fortunate, but also can go through a lot of intense feelings of sorrow and depression. Horva Bajrapada is also ruled over by Aja Ekapada. Aja Ekapada is described as a one-footed, unborn one. And this is often a very confusing description that is difficult to decipher. If we think about this deity of Aja Ekapada, there are multiple symbols. There is a one-footed goat, a unicorn, a fire-breathing dragon, or a fire-breathing serpent. And so this is representing this unusual energy, this energy that is outside of the norms, that is controversial, that is going against the grain. And again, these are people who are very much mysterious and unusual. These are people who are going against the norms of society. They have their own path in life. And so this is a Naksatra that is highly independent and self-sufficient. They are marching to the beat of their own drum. And so this is a very special Naksatra that is all about taking one's own journey in life. And this Aja Ekapada is also sometimes described as a bolt of lightning, this instantaneous fire that comes down and strikes the earth. So Aja Ekapada is actually one of the forms of Rudra, which is a fierce form of Shiva. Shiva is the god of destruction and disillusion. It is all about dissolving the things that need to be released, that need to be let go of. This destruction, this ending, this removal that leads to change and transformation. And so this is a Naksatra that also is about transformation. Those who are born under this Naksatra often go through difficulties in life. They often can take the wrong path or make mistakes early on, which leads them into these intense transformative experiences. And the goal of this transformation is to bring these individuals into spiritual awakening, into enlightenment, this quest towards something higher, towards something that is more meaningful. If we think about the lightning, the lightning also acts as a pillar between the sky and the earth. And this Naksatra is a pillar. It is a conduit where the spiritual energy is flowing through. And so this Naksatra is where the Kundalini is awakened. This is the awakening to higher consciousness that is occurring here within this Naksatra. Again, this is the gateway into liberation, into enlightenment. And so this lightning bolt is also representing the fire that is within us. It is this spiritual energy, this life force that is found at the base of the spine and rises up during a spiritual awakening. And so these are people who are often very intuitive, who have a ton of spiritual wisdom and knowledge. These are people who are old souls of our zodiac, who have lived multiple lifetimes before and have a wealth of knowledge within them. And so when this energy is tapped into, these are individuals who can shine their light out into the world, who can make a difference in this world. This is a highly spiritual and mystical Naksatra. This is associated with another deity of Rohit, which is the god of evolution. And Rohit is described as an energy that is unborn. It is on the verge of being born. It is the sustainer here on earth. It makes the energy, the divine life force manifest into the concrete. And so again, this is going back to this connection with the lightning, where lightning is an energy that is not in a physical form, but is able to connect to this physical plane. So this connection, this bridge between the physical and the spiritual is active here within this Purva Bajrapada Naksatra. The man with the two faces also can be seen as having two different personalities or two different faces that we wear. So those who are born under this Naksatra often can appear one way in one environment and can behave completely differently in another environment. And so these are people who can lead a double life. These are people who can be completely normal and mundane within society, but might be practicing some 
mystical or spiritual studies in private. These are people on the negative side leading to the most extreme case who also could be doing criminal activities behind the scenes. So again, there is this interplay with good and evil, and this all becomes a choice within this Naksatra. Which path will these individuals take is the big question. This is a very powerful Naksatra, but there is a huge choice to be made about how that power is going to be used. Horva Bajrapada is a Naksatra that often is seeing the reality of life. Again, these are people who are very wise, who are very profound in their insights. They are able to see on a level that others are not aware of. And so these are people who are seeing how everything is interconnected within reality. They are understanding the depth, the wisdom of life itself. And oftentimes this is a Naksatra that isn't okay with living living a normal mundane life. They need depth. They need deeper meaning within their lives. They are on a quest for this deep spiritual understanding. And so these are people who are not interested in the superficial, who are not interested in the things that are worshipped within the masses. All of the glitz, the glamour, all of the things within society are not impressive to these individuals. They are looking for something that is much deeper, that is more valuable. Now, this is a Naksatra that often, when unevolved, is going to search for these things within the material world, is going to try to indulge. But this indulgence in the material world is going to lead to emptiness and dissatisfaction. And this is where these individuals can wake up and they can move towards this quest to seeking knowledge, to seeking information. But even that will not satisfy them. They need to find deep spiritual meaning. They need to find something that has purpose behind it. And these are people who can be incredibly passionate. They have tremendous work ethic. They are able to focus in on whatever it is that they want to accomplish. And they do it with passion. They do it with purpose. They do it with meaning. These are people who are full of soul, full of life. They're bursting with emotion. And so these are people who are all about standing up for what's right. There's a benevolence to this Naksatra. They want to help. They want to make a difference. They want to stand up for what is right. However, this relationship to the lightning, to the fire, to the intensity of this Naksatra often can make these people come off as too intense to others. They often are very honest, very straightforward, very authentic in their approach, and this can be off-putting to others. These are people who also can be very skilled in public speaking, who can be very skilled in writing and spreading a message. This is a Jupiter-ruled Naksatra, and this is the last of our Jupiter Naksatras. Jupiter is guru, is the teacher, is the wise one. Jupiter is all about the expansiveness the broadening of our horizons, taking us towards something that is higher, the higher principles, following morals, following these principles and philosophies that are higher. And so there is a good nature to Jupiter. There is a benevolence that is there. And we can see this displayed here within this Naksatra, as this is the height of Jupiter's energy. And we can also see that in the last quarter of this Naksatra, that it falls in Pisces, which is the home of Jupiter. So Jupiter is especially feeling happy in that last quarter where Pisces is. And so this Naksatra as a whole is where Jupiter's expression is in the most intense form. These are people who are seeking ultimate liberation as Jupiter is about expansiveness. It is boundaryless. It is the limitlessness. So these are people who are looking for this ultimate freedom, looking to understand the deeper meaning. They are seeing through the illusion of this material existence. Sometimes this passion can go too far where these people can become fanatical about their belief systems. They can become very forceful and aggressive about putting their beliefs out into the world. They also can be fierce in terms of calling out the injustice in the world and calling out 
the fraudulence within the world. They see the lies. They see the illusions. They see all of the superficiality and they are going to call this out as it holds no meaning for them. They are all about getting to the deeper truth, finding the true meaning, the true essence behind everything. These are people who often love to learn. Again, they are on this quest for deeper understanding. So these are people who can be very educated, very knowledgeable, carrying a wealth of wisdom and wanting to dive deeper into even more information to uncover the meaning behind it. These are people who can gather tons of information from different places and figure out how to integrate this information, especially those who are on a spiritual journey. They are understanding the symbolism, the meaning. They are processing all of this information that is coming from a variety of places. These are people who don't take anything at face value. They often are looking at everything in a very cynical way. If you are giving them information without any kind of evidence or proof, they will most likely be in disbelief. They are wanting to know the truth, the essence behind everything. So the knowledge itself is not enough. They need to understand the meaning. They need to dissect it. They need to get to the spiritual understanding behind everything. This is a very deep and complex Naksatra where there is an interplay with good and bad once again. And we can see this especially on the Aquarius side of this Naksatra as Aquarius is co-ruled by Rahu. And Rahu has this very elusive, mysterious quality to it. And so these are people who definitely can have an interest in the dark side, who can have an interest in occult knowledge, in Tantra, in black magic and things that are unknown that are mystical they can have an interest in horror movies and things that are taking us into the darkness of this world they want to face the darkness they want to understand the darkness to overcome it and so again this is a part of this first journey of the spiritual awakening one of the difficulties of this Naksatra is a feeling of great loss and sorrow. These are people who can feel very misunderstood and out of place in this world. They often are seeing everything in a very different way. Again, these are evolved souls. These are old souls. These are people who see on a level that others are not able to. And so they often are coming across as very much misunderstood and out of place. These are people who are going to rebel against the norms, who are going to take a path of their own. And so one of the biggest lessons of this Naksatra is to trust in your intuition and to stick to that path that you have set out to take, to not allow others to sway or influence your journey in this life, because you have come here with a very unique and deeply spiritual mission in this life. Horva Bajrapada, again, is a Naksatra that is prone to making mistakes early on, that is prone to getting into difficult situations. This also can manifest as being accident prone and getting into situations where there are injuries, where there are illnesses, where there are situations that you are getting involved in. And again, Many of these situations are to wake you up, to bring you to a state of awareness. And so there is always a meaning behind everything that is occurring within these individuals' lives. They are coming across situations that are showing them something where they need to look within themselves. These are people who often become fed up with the material world, who become fed up with the superficial things, and often can develop a dislike, a disinterest for it. And so these are people who sometimes can be against things like fashion, things that are colorful, things that are beautiful, uninterested in the superficial aspects of life always looking for something more meaningful. And these are people who can sometimes protest against these superficialities, not understanding why others are so interested in the material aspects of life. There are also people who can have a tendency to withdraw. They need a ton of privacy to themselves. And again, they often are leading a double life where they are 
doing things that are different within their own private space. So they need freedom to be uninterrupted. They need privacy to themselves to not get taken over and overwhelmed by the things that are occurring within the outside world. This is often an Aksatra that is very sensitive to the world and is often rejecting the ways of the world, seeing the injustice, seeing the violence, seeing the darkness within the world and wanting to withdraw from it altogether. And so there can be an escapist nature to this Naksatra as well. There can be a tendency to delve into deep depression and isolation. These are people who also can be very moody and can have very violent temperaments and outbursts. And so this is a Naksatra that is prone to anger and frustration. And oftentimes this anger is a catalyst to their spiritual awakening as well. These are individuals who can become angry and this can bring them to a realization of areas that they need to change and improve within their lives. This energy, this kundalini energy, this fire that is running up and down the spine is very intense within this Naksatra. These are people who possess a ton of restless energy. And so there can often be difficulty with sitting still or a nervousness and anxiety that is associated with this Naksatra. There's a need to balance this energy that exists within you. And this is usually found through meditation. Again, the power or Shakti of this Naksatra is to rise to an evolutionary level or to use spiritual fire, which is resulting in this ability to support the entire world. And the desire here is to gain spiritual knowledge. And so these are people, once they are able to transform through the darkness, once they are able to find the light that is in them, they can shine this light out into the world. These are people who can help make a difference in the world, who make excellent teachers, mystics, shamans, counselors, people who are able to impact the collective in a major way. Sometimes this is a Naksatra that can have a low tolerance level for the sufferings and difficulties of life, but they can also be very much indifferent to pain. These are people who can inflict pain onto themselves, who can, again, indulge in deep depression, but there also can be self-harm, self-sabotage under this Naksatra. These are people who are fascinated somehow in death and pain and darkness and sorrow. These are people who are going deep into the darkness to face and overcome these obstacles. And so there often is a fascination with things that are darker. The deity of Aja Ekapada is said to be the vehicle for Agni, and Agni is the god of fire. So again, we see this connection with fire, with lightning, and Agni is associated with purification and fire rituals. And so there is this element of purification that is found here within this Naksatra. Again, Purva Bhadra people are often people who go through intense experiences, transformation, situations of despair, of hopelessness, of darkness, of making mistakes, and the karma within this Naksatra is delivered swiftly. So these are people who often suffer instantaneously after taking the wrong actions in life. And this Agni is associated with the purification of that karma. And so these are people who have actually come into this life to burn away their karmas. And this is why this Naksatra often goes through a great deal of suffering as they have come to wrap up their karmas in this lifetime. And so these are people who cannot escape those karmas. They are coming directly to them. And through that, there is an opportunity for growth, an opportunity for spiritual evolution. These are people who can receive a spark of inspiration. Deep, profound insights and creative inspiration can be found here. These are people who are also very devoted. Again, these are people who are passionate. They're filled with passion. And so they can be very hardworking, very devoted to whatever project they are working towards. They also can be spiritually devoted. And so there can be a deep reverence towards whatever religious or spiritual practices they have. However, sometimes these are people who can 
focus so much on their devotions that they're neglecting their own needs. And so there is a tendency to not focus on the things that you need individually for yourself. There's a tendency to be self-sacrificing under this Naksatra, to want to help, to want to give back to the world, to want to make a difference on this larger scale. These are visionaries. These are people who have come to change the world. And focusing in this way can mean that you are neglecting the things that you need. And so this is definitely a Naksatra where you want to focus in on yourself. You want to make sure that you are not giving too much to the point of neglecting yourself. These are highly original people thinking outside of the box, inventing new things, especially in the Aquarius side of this Naksatra. In the Pisces side, there tends to be more of a mystical, elusive nature. The Pisces side is all about this deep spiritual wisdom where they have profound mystical insights and everything to them is mystical. Sometimes in the Pisces part of this Nakshatra, there is a tendency to get detached or disillusioned by this material existence. These are people in general who are very spiritual and have a ton of spiritual potential. They sometimes can be very rebellious though, and this rebelliousness can get them into trouble. They're very goal-oriented though. They, again, have a mission. They have a purpose. They are passionate about something. They're highly driven people who are born under this Naksatra. They sometimes can be very antisocial. And so these are people who sometimes are not interested in answering other people's questions and constantly being questioned. They are all about their privacy and independence. And there is a great deal that they can achieve on their own. These are people who can go through somewhat manic states with their emotions. They can have dramatic mood swings and they have a way of experiencing life to the fullest, experiencing the full essence of life, experiencing sadness to the depths, experiencing happiness as bliss. These are people who are taking in every inch of emotion, every inch of their experience in this life. These are people who are highly idealistic. They have many ideas and philosophies, but sometimes these are people who can, again, become overly fanatical or too invested in their philosophy. And there is a tendency to find that there is difficulties when getting too attached to a particular belief system, that somehow that belief system will be challenged or you will end up changing that belief system. Again, on the Aquarius side, these are people who are very futuristic, who are very much about changing the world. On the Pisces side, we see more of a gentle side where these are people who are very much about healing, about compassion, about mysticism. One of the things about getting into wrong situations in life is that this is definitely a Naksatra that needs to take its time before making decisions. There can be a tendency to be very impulsive, to jump into situations. Again, these are people who possess this fiery kundalini energy within them, where there is a lot of sporadic energy that is occurring here. So this is sometimes a Naksatra that needs to ground itself, that needs to meditate, that needs that time to self-reflect and to calm down all of these intense energies. These are people who definitely can come across as intense in their personality. They have a very fierce disposition and they are very honest and truthful. If they disagree, they will make it known. These are people who, again, can be very blessed, very fortunate in life. They can gain a great deal of wealth. They can do very well in their career. They know how to make money. They know how to make things happen. And there is no limit to what this Naksatra can do. These are people who can do anything that they put their minds to. This can definitely be a very intelligent and scholarly Naksatra filled with a depth of wisdom. And these are people who can come across as very witty, as very humorous people. They have a playful nature to them and they don't take life as seriously. They're very aware of death and life. These are people who see death as a transformation into another life. And so they are not taking the limitations of life as seriously. They're very aware of this. 
These are people who would definitely strive to be unique, who strive to go against the grain, to do something different. They want to do something that is out of the box. They are not about conforming. They are not about fitting in, about being like others. They are all about being different. And these are people who can become very fierce when their independence is threatened. Again, in the worst case scenario, this is a Nox Satra that can show criminals, that can show very nefarious behavior, doing things that are causing harm, that are causing destruction. That is the lower part of this Nox Satra. And this is a Nox Satra of extremes. And so the positive qualities and the negative qualities are polarizing. They are polar opposites to the extreme. These are people who can be very good, very sweet, very helpful, or they can be the worst people who are causing the most amount of destruction. They possess a tremendous amount of power, and it all comes down to the choice of how they will use this power and potential. Sometimes there is also a vengeful side to this Naksatra. There can be a ruthless need for justice here, where these are individuals who can be very fierce and argumentative, who can be all about using their intelligence to destroy anyone who challenges them. And so there is a fierce, intense quality that is found here. And the animal symbol of this Naksatra is a male lion. So we can see the fierce qualities that come through this Naksatra. These are people who are very bold, very honest, while also being very reserved and mysterious. One of the most profound qualities of this Naksatra is the ability to come to a state of self-realization. These are people, if they put the effort into their spiritual life, can achieve a great deal of self-awareness. And again, this is often going to put them on a path towards higher spiritual awareness, where they're able to become a teacher, a leader, a helper of the world. These are people who are a ray of sunshine within the light within life. These are people who are able to shine their light out and make a better world if they are choosing a higher path. And so this is the most incredible thing about this Naksatra is this ability to help, to change the world, to make a difference, to become this spiritual teacher for others, to bring others to this state of conscious awareness. And oftentimes, these are people who can trigger others. There can be some jealousy or hatred towards this Naksatra. These are people who can do nothing at all and can still rub others the wrong way. And oftentimes, this is triggering some kind of deep wound in others. So these are people who are a walking ray of light. They bring consciousness wherever they go. And so oftentimes when these people are being fierce and honest, they are also awakening a truth in others. One of the things that this Naksatra has to work on is their desires. They can have very intense desires about what they want out of this material existence. Again, this is a deep quest to find deeper meaning. The problem with this, again, is that this can lead to a feeling of emptiness as there is soon a realization that these superficial things, these materialistic things, don't possess any deep meaning at all. And this can lead them into a deep level of depression. And so there's definitely a need here to control one's desires, to overcome these deep passions that are found within this Naksatra. These are people when giving fully into their desires can lead towards a darker path in life. These are people when fully evolved who are all about sacrifice, all about sacrificing themselves for a greater cause. So again, when these are people who are choosing a higher path, they come to this higher spiritual awareness of what their purpose is, what their true meaning is in this life. And it often involves helping, healing, teaching, making a difference within this world. They possess a unique quality about them. They are the old souls possessing this incredible wisdom and depth that can change the hearts and souls of others. Now, each Naksatra can also be divided up into 13 degrees, 20 minutes. And so we can take this 13 degree, 20 minute Naksatra and break it up into three 
degree 20 minute sections known as quarters or padas. And the first is falling under an Aries Navamsa. This is going to give a very energetic and passionate quality. These are people who are very goal oriented, who want to jump into the action, who want to take action in the world and to make changes. They are eager to take action and to help. These are people who can have skills in the military and engineering, in writing, in communication, anything where they have to be technical or scientific. These are very logical people, very intellectual. Those who are born under the second quarter are falling under a Taurus Navamsa. These are people who are very much geared towards indulgence in the material pleasures. This is the most materialistic side of this Naksatra. These are people who are very creative, very gifted often. They can have artistic talents. These are people who are very much about security. They can be very protective. They can be very family oriented, very much possessive over their loved ones. These are people who also can find healthy outlets for their energy. They can be very physical, very active people. Those who are born under the third quarter or third pada are born under a Gemini Navamsa. These are very social people, very talkative, very curious into seeing both sides of a situation. These are people who can play devil's advocate, who are very playful, who are very humorous, who are very engaged. They are looking to teach, to share their knowledge with others. These can make excellent writers, excellent communicators, very philosophical. They can dive into different religions, into different philosophies, wanting to learn from all angles and wanting to teach the information that they have gained. These are very fair-minded and justice-oriented individuals. Those who are born under the fourth quarter or fourth pada of Porva Bajra Pada are born under a Cancer Navamsa. This is going to give more of a sensitive emotional side to this Naksatra. And this last quarter here is from zero degrees till three degrees, 20 minutes of Pisces. So we are officially in the sign of Pisces. These are individuals who are very sensitive, who are very much imaginative and in their own world, daydreamers, and they can have a difficulty with dealing with the hardships of life. They can be escape artists, people who are very much about isolation and being in their own reality. They also can be very creative, very talented people, very much about healing, helping, making a difference. They're very compassionate people, and they can make excellent teachers, guides, mystics here under this fourth quarter. These are people who are profoundly spiritual and are very good in nature. However, these are people who also can be very impressionable. So it is recommended to be very careful about who you are around and who you are allowing to influence you. There is a tendency here to swing towards the wrong actions by being influenced by others. These are people who also can be very friendly and can attract a great deal of people within their social circle. These are people who are excellent humanitarians who have a strong desire to help and to make a difference. Mm -hmm.